in a simple to the sea very soon in this one on 22nd of uh, may so we had requested and maharaj is very mercifully accepted our invitation and accepted our request to enlighten all of us on the wonderful transcendental teaching of prabhat maharaj so let's start it here yesterday and maharaj will continue to so let's welcome maharaj in jinta mein dham by taking shraddha to him हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा तुम भी कहने महाराज एंड प्रभु जी ऑल्सो हैज गॉट अ वेरी यूनिक अंचल हेलो साधु हरे दिस इज फॉर सेल्फ ओह ब्यूटीफुल So, Prabhu, I will use to bring the white kamsha. This is uh, normally uh, actually Prabhu, you will not be taken. Thank you very much. This is from your NGO, right? So, Prabhu is running an NGO, and where they they prepare such kind of kamsha. So, I think it was white in color, but by seeing the saffron color, he started making saffron color also for sannyasi and non-sannyasi. I request all of you to take this spend a second with me. Pure Bhagwan for now, please, all of you. And Pure Bhagwan Salik Board, please address humbly to us everyone. And whoever comes next and sitting next to you, please have a seat with us. ಪಾರಮ ಕಾರುಣ ನೇತಾಯ ಗೋರಾಚಾಂದ್ರ ಸಬಿ ರಮಿ ಕೇವಲ ನಂದ ಕಾಂಡ ಸಭಾವತಾರ ಸರ ಶಿರಮಿ ಕೇವಲ ನಂದ ಕಾಂಡ ಭಜ ಭಜ ಭಾಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಿಥಾಯ ಸುಧೃತ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಕೋರಿ ಭಜ ಭಜ ಭಾಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಿಥಾಯ ಸುಧೃತ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಕೋರಿ ವಿಷಯ ಚದೀಯ ಸೇರಸಿ ಮೋಚಿಯ ಮೋಕೆ ಬೋಲೋ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ವಿಷಯ ಚದೀಯ ಸೇರಸ ಮಾಚಿಯ ಮೋಕೆ ಬೋಲೋ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಜಕೋರೆ ಭಾಯ ತ್ರಿಭುವನ ಹೇ ಮನ್ನ ಗಾಯ ಲಾಚ 
देखो अरे पाए त्रिभुवन जाए हे मन न जाए अल्लाह जा पशु पकी जोरे पशन विचारे सुनिया रघुना गा पशु पक्की जोरे पशन विचारे सुनिया रघुना गा संसारे मचिया रोहिल पारिया से पर नो संसारे मजिया रोहिले पारिया से पर नो आपन्न खर मय बुंजय समाना कहे लो चन जा खर मे बुंजय समान कहे लो चन जा गोरा सब बचारा चरसी रमानी के बलानंद कोट प्रेम नंदे हरि ओ ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जया मुधेरय नष्ट प्रायशु बभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट के So this evening we want to begin speaking about the prayers offered by Prahlad Maharaj to Lord Nrsinghadev. 
This is chapter 9 of the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Lord Nisringadev, of course, appeared and killed Haranyakashipu when he saw how Prahlad was being terrorized by his demoniac father. Lord Nisringadev could not tolerate to see all the uh, threats which were being made on the life of Prahlad Maharaj. And finally, Lord Nisringadev, of course, appeared from the pillar and fought with Harani Kashipu and killed him. But Lord Nisringadev was in a very angry mood. He'd been greatly enraged by the treatment of his dear devotee, Prahlad. And different personalities all came and offered prayers to try to calm Lord Nusringadev. Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma and other different personalities, demigods, they, they, they all came. Even Lakshmi, the consort of Lord Nusringadev, she also <coughs> tried a little bit to offer prayers, but when she saw the angry form of Lord Nusringadev, she was shocked. It is said, by the power of Lila Shakti, the Lord's pastime potency, Lakshmi was so shocked, she was afraid to come in front of Lord Nisringadev and offer prayers to him. So, Lord Brahma then took the initiative to tell Prahlad that you should go, you go, you go and try and offer some words, try to calm Lord Nusringadev. This angry form of Lord Nusringa, this Ugra Nusringa, right? The angry form. So, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, he came, he's only a young boy, remember, and he came before the gigantic form of Lord Nisringa. And Lord Nisringa Dev was in a ferocious mood. He was with anger, he was enraged. But Prahlad was not afraid because Prahlad is the devotee. The demons they're afraid when they see the form of Lord Narsimha. But the devotees are not afraid because the devotees understand this is the Lord. This is the form of our worshipable Lord. And we feel pleasure to see the Lord. Maybe, maybe you've seen yourself, you've seen the picture of Haranyaksha fighting with Lord Varaha. <laughs> now, not everyone knows about Lord Varaha. And when they see that picture of Haranyaksha fighting Lord Varaha, they think ordinary common people who are not educated in any spiritual knowledge, when they see the picture, they think Haranyaksha is a good man. And they think Lord Varaha must be the demon. Because Lord Varaha is in the form of a boar. And they think, oh, who is this terrible beast fighting with this poor man, you know? <laughs> They're thinking Haranyaksha to be some saintly person. 
So the, the common people who have no knowledge, no education, they cannot identify who is the Lord and who is not the Lord. So Haranyakashipu was killed by Lord Nishringadev. And Lord Nishringadev was in a greatly angry mood. But Prahlad was not bewildered. And he understood, this is my worshipable, my worshipable Lord. And he came in front of Lord Narsimhadev and he offered his obeisances. He bowed down before Lord Narsimhadev. He fell flat on his feet in front of Lord. And Lord Narsimhadev, seeing Prahlad, in front of him, then Lord Nishringadev was pacified and he saw the little boy bowing to him and Lord Nishringadev picked him up and placed his lotus hand on the head of Prahlad. It's very significant that Lord Nishringadev put his lotus hand onto the head of Prahlad Maharaj. Because by doing that, he was able to put Divya Gyan, transcendental knowledge, into Prahlad. Because remember, Prahlad is only a little boy. He's only a few years old. He doesn't really know anything. Of course, I mean, he knows everything he needs to know. He knows the Lord. He knows that the Lord is everywhere and he is completely surrendered to the Lord. So that, that's a, the real thing to know. But anyway, Lord Nishringadev, for the purpose of allowing Prahlad to recite some prayers, he placed his hand onto the head of Prahlad Maharaj. And then Prahlad Maharaj, being impregnated with this Divya Gyan, he began to offer his prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And he begins by saying to Prahlad, is by saying to Lord Nishringadev, he says that, you know, I, I'm not qualified to offer prayers. These other demigods, they're much more qualified than me. These demigods, they're all in the mode of goodness. But I'm from the demon family. I'm from the mode of ignorance. So what qualification do I have to offer any prayers? If these demigods who had come before me, if they could not pacify the Lord, how is it possible that I can ever do anything to calm the Lord? Because I am from the Asuras. I am, and as we Asuras, we associate with the mode of ignorance. So Prahlad shows the very important quality of humility, right? Uh, if you read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Charitamrita is Bengali classical literature. If you study Bengali language, Bengali literature, then they read books like the Chaitanya Charitamrita and the Chaitanya Bhagwat and the Chaitanya Mangal. These books were written 500 years ago in Bengali poetry. And they're read today. Of course, we value them. We read them. We take great pleasure in hearing about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I had the opportunity uh, 
Sometimes we go out for parikrama and we go and visit different holy places near to Navadweep in what is called Goramandala Bhumi. Goramandala Bhumi means the greater area of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. You know, Navadweep Dam, that's the center, central region. But the greater region is Goramandala Bhumi. And you can go to places like Ekachakra. Lord Nityananda is from Ekachakra. So it's quite, it's like three, four hours away from Navadri by car. It's Goramandala Bhumi. If you go to Katwa, that's also Goramandala Bhumi. Lord Chaitanya went to Katwa to take sannyas. So there's a place, I, I forget the name of it, but in that this place, they had the original manuscript of the Chaitanya Bhagwat written on palm leaves 500 years ago. And you can see the original manuscript of that book, how it was written 500 years ago in beautiful Bengali poetry language. So anyway, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a beautiful verse written by Krishna Das Kaviraj. And he has written, Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista, Purushera Kita Haiti Munishe Lagista. This is an example of humility. Krishna Das Kaviraj is saying, I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. Jagai Madhai Haiti Munishe Papista. I am, this is his humility. Krishna Das Kaviraj, he's the author of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's a classic, it's beautiful language, many verses from scriptures. And it describes all the lila of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, particularly the later pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The early pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are in Chaitanya Bhagwat. But Krishna Das Kaviraj wanted to, he thought there should be also a book about the later pastimes. So he wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in that book, he begins, it's in the Adi Lila chapter 5, he said, I am more sinful than Jaghai and Madhai. He said, Jagai Madai Haiti Munishe Papista, Purushera Kita Haiti Munishe Lagista. He said, I am lower than a worm in stool. Now that's quite low, isn't it? To be a worm in stool, that's, you know, that's a low position. And Krishna Das Kaviraj said, I am lower than the worm in stool. And then he goes on, he said, anyone who hears my name, they will lose their pious activities. And anyone who utters my name, they will become sinful. This is the humility of a devotee. Devotees, the more the devotee is advanced, the more humble they become. It's important. Humility is one of the qualities of surrender to Krishna. Right? You've studied Bhagavad Gita, you know, six characteristics of surrender to Krishna. Anukku yasya sankalpa pratiku yasya varjanam. Like that, accepting everything favorable for devotional service, rejecting what is not favorable, knowing only Krishna can protect you, knowing only Krishna can maintain you, having no desire separate from the desire of Krishna, and finally, always being meek and humble. 
an important quality of the surrendered devotee. Last night, we sang that song, I sang the song, uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Koramori, Toma Vina Kedaya Jagatasam, Patita Pavana Hetu Tava Mosamo Patita Prabhu Napayebi Ara. The Naratam Das Thakur prays that, that you've come, you're Patita Pavan, you've come to deliver the fallen souls. So my claim is first, I am very fallen, you please save me. This is the humility of the devotees. And so Prahlad Maharaj is also in that same mood, he's very humble. Although he's only a young boy, you know, we read about Dhruva Maharaj, you know, Dhruva Maharaj, a little, a little different. Dhruva Maharaj is Kshatriya, right? Because he couldn't get to sit on his father's lap, he became greatly angry. Mm, it affected him, but for his ultimate benefit. Anyway, Prahlad Maharaj is an example of humility. Coming before Lord Nisringadev, he said, I'm very unqualified to offer prayers to you. He doesn't think I'm very qualified. He thinks I'm very unqualified. So Lord Nisringadev is certainly you know, when you hear somebody speak like that, then these kind of words, they go to the heart and we will have certainly some feeling, some appreciation for the speaker. So Prahlad Maharaj requests Lord Nisringadev that, you know, please don't expect me to say anything very profound or very meaningful. I'm very fallen. I'm from the family of the demons, I'm unqualified. Somehow I have the opportunity to say something to you. But then Prahlad goes on to speak that one may be born in a Brahmana family and you may have all the Brahminical qualities. But if you're not a devotee, then it's all useless. You know, the brahmanas are generally considered the head of the social body. There are four varnas, brahman, shatri, vaisya, sudra, and they're compared to parts of the body. The brahman is the head, the Kshatriya, the arms, the Vaishya, the belly, and the Sudra, the legs. So the Brahmana is the head. Head is the most important part in the society. The cut off the head, body's dead. You can cut off the arms, you can cut off the legs, even you can take out the belly, the person can still live. But if you cut off the head, dead for sure. So Brahmana, very important part in the society. But a Brahmana who is not a devotee is not very meaningful. If the Brahmana has no devotion for the Lord, it is not very valuable to the society. We know from the Bhagavad Gita, there are nine qualities for the Brahmana mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Samo damasta pasyoncham shantirajavam evacha jnana vijnana astikyam brahma karma svabhavajam and peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, like that. These qualities are there for the brahmana. So one may have all these qualities, but he may not be a devotee, he's just a brahmana, 
He's a pundit. He may know. He may have knowledge, but he has no devotion. So that person is not appreciated by the Lord. The Lord wants devotion. He's attracted by the devotee. It's the devotion which is meaningful to the Lord. From the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has also said that only by devotion can I be understood. Bhakcha mama bijanati yavam yas jasmin tattvata. Devotion is what Lord Krishna wants. It's not the offerings. Right? Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti uparitam ashnami prayat. You can offer so many nice leaves and fruits and flowers. But if there's no devotion, it is not very pleasing to the Lord. There must be the devotion. And the same way the brahmanas can recite prayers, but these prayers are not so meaningful if there's no devotion. When we sing Damodar Astikam every year during Kartik, then it also mentions like that how the Lord takes pleasure in the devotion of Mother Yashoda, not in just hearing the Vedic mantras with no devotion. In Brahma Samhita also, Lord Brahma says, Vedeshu Durlabham, Adurlabham, Atma Bhakta. That it's very difficult to know the Lord from the Vedas, but very easy to know him from the devotees. So Prahlad Maharaj begins his prayers to Lord Nisringadev by explaining like this the importance of devotion rather than simply the birth. Somebody may have the good birth, Brahmana birth, born in the Brahmin family. It's a, far, it's a good opportunity for spiritual life, but it's not enough. It's a good beginning to be born Brahmana family. But you have to go on from there. Just like Srila Prabhupada gives the example, one may be born, one's father may be high court judge. So does it mean the son is also high court judge? No. One's father is doctor. Does it mean son is also doctor? No. You have to become qualified. Qualificate. You have to develop the qualifications. So being born in the Brahmana family, very nice, very good. But go on and become also devotee. The topmost Brahmanas are the devotees, the Vaishnavas. So Prahlad Maharaj understood that the Lord does not <coughs> consider the material aspects of the person. Oh, you're very rich. Oh, you're very high class. Oh, you're very educated. Maybe you have PhD. Maybe you have, you have a, you're a big scholar. You know so many verses, you know Shastra. One, one devotee was telling me he, he, that he, he was picked up in a, by one man to take him to a program and the man was telling him, he said, yes, I know this Puranas, I know this Shastra, I know that Shastra. And, 
And, and whenever I drink my tea, I always put a tosi in my tea. <laughs> so, you know, like that, you know, people can be big scholars, but it, it doesn't mean that they have devotion. And when we're approaching the Lord, the Lord is not considering who's qualified and who's not qualified. He's not considering, oh, this person is very educated or oh, he's very good. He can be my man. Or this person is very good looking. They can be with me. I want them. No, he doesn't consider these, these, these qualifications, the looks, the birth, the money, the, that's not important to the Lord. What is important is the heart, the feeling of devotion. And Prahlad Maharaj, he, is, he, is, he knows this. He's, he's telling this in the beginning of his prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And he tells Lord Nishringadev that, you know, I'm, I'm from the family of the demons. You just killed my father. I'm from that kind of family. And here I am offering prayers to you. Are you going to accept Prahlad Maharaj's beginning in a very, very humble way, taking a very low position that Look at me, you know, I'm so unqualified, but I've come before you. And I know, Prahlad said, I know that you're not considering my material qualifications. You're not going to discriminate against me because I'm from the Asura family or because I'm from Patala Loka. You, you know, the demigods are there, they're from Swarga Loka. And there, here I, Prahlad says, here I am from Patala Loka. So it's not a question of where you're coming from. That's not important. What is important is the heart, the feeling of the heart, the love, the devotion. And this is Prahlad's qualification that he has come before the Lord to offer prayers. He tells Lord Nishringadev that I'm not offering prayers for your benefit. I know, Lord Nishringadev, you're the Supreme Lord. You know everything. You know all your glories. What can I tell you? I am offering prayers for my benefit, for my purification. When we offer to the Lord, it's not that the Lord needs our offering. When we offer our tea, we don't do it for the Lord's pleasure. It's for us. We're doing it for our purification. When we cook for the Lord, the Lord doesn't need our food. He's got many Lakshmis who all cook better than us. And they're cooking, hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis are cooking in the spiritual world. And they're cooking. And the, do you think the Lord needs our food? Our, does he need our offerings? We are doing it for our benefit for our purification. So Prahlad Maharaj is talking like this to Lord Nishringadev. He wants Lord Nishringadev to, well, not only, it's, it's not that he wants Lord Nishringadev, but he's expressing the mood of devotion, the, the mood which we should all cultivate because Prahlad is one of the Mahajans. There are 12 Mahajans. 
facts in the Vedic scripture. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu Komar Kapilo Manu Pralado Janako Bhishmo Baliya Vyasaki Vayam. Right? Prahlad is one of the twelve authorities. And we are told also Mahajano Yenagata Sapanta. Follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. We have to learn from devotees like Prahlad how to offer prayers to the Lord. And praying is one of the nine Angas of Bhakti. Shravanam, Kirtan, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dashyam, Sakyam, Atmani. So Vandanam, offering prayers to the Lord. We have to learn to pray. Certainly, we pray, chanting Hare Krishna is our prayer to the Lord, our constant prayer. The Hare Krishna mantra, we're praying to the Lord. O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari, O Lord Rama, please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please give me the strength to serve you. It's a prayer and it's also the answer to our prayer because by chanting, we're, serve, we're praying, we're, we're offering our service to the Lord. It's a prayer and it's the answer to the prayer because we're praying for service and when we chant, that is service to the Lord. So this chanting, the Maha Mantra, it's the means and it's the end also. It's a sadhana and it's also the sadhya, it's a siddha, it's a perfection. Prahlad Maharaj prays to Lord Nishringadev. I am from the demon family. I have come before you. I know you don't want anything material. It's not that you're going to discriminate against me. You simply are interested in devotion. It is by devotion that we can approach you and <coughs> offer prayers. And then Prahlad Maharaj said something very interesting. He says that just like is it he said, you have killed Haranya Kashipu, you've killed my father. He said, all the, all the denizens of heaven are all happy that he's being killed. And Prahlad Maharaj gives an example. He said, just like a saintly person is happy when a snake or a scorpion is killed. Oh, this is sometimes puzzling. And Srila Prabhupada described that he was surprised also. He described, Srila Prabhupada said, one time he was in Mayapur. And in Mayapur there are snakes, you know. There are, because Ganga is there and race fields are there. So there's quite a few snakes around and sometimes cobras. And, Sometimes people get bit. So, one time he described he was at the Gaudiamat. This was times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Means it must have been like 1930, about a hundred years ago, how Mayapur was in 1930. We cannot imagine. Anyway, more, more jungle, very basic. And so there was a snake. It was announced, there's a snake. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati immediately said, kill it. So he killed it. So Prabhupada said, I was shocked. He said, I thought, he said that these are sadhus and they have killed the snake. 
is this the behavior of sadhus? But then he read Srimad Bhagavatam and he read how in this, this, this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, Prahlad Maharaj said to Lord Nishringadev, he said, saintly people are happy when a snake or a scorpion is killed. The same way the denizens of heaven were happy when Haranya Kashipu was killed. Snakes and scorpions are envious creatures. They bite innocent people. And they can, the bite can be very painful, it can even be fatal. People can die. You know, snake bite. You can suffer a lot. So when there's a snake or a scorpion, Shastra say can kill it. And even more deadly than the snake or the scorpion is the envious person. Envious person like Aranya Kashipu. Snakes and scorpion, they may bite you. You can probably cure it by mantra. Just like in Mayapur, sometimes we had the Guru Kula there in Mayapur, and the young boys sometimes would get bitten by the snake. And so when they get bitten, they have to take them to the neighboring village. There's some Mohammedans in the neighboring village, and there would be a man there who knew the mantra to counteract the snake bite. And you take the boy there, and the man will chant the mantra and can overcome the effect of the poison of the snake bite. But the envious person more deadly than a snake or a scorpion. There's no mantra to counteract the envy of the person. And so the demigods had been suffering so much under Haranyi Kashipu's oppression. Haranyi Kashipu was powerful demon. He conquered the heavenly planets. Even Narada Muni was having to serve people like Haranyakashipu. He was so powerful. He conquered heaven. Oh, the demigods were all afraid of him. They could not defeat him. But now Lord Nasringadev had come. And he had fought and he had killed Haranya Kashipu. So the demigods were relieved. They were very happy. Oh, he's dead at last. Now we can again enjoy. Right? Heavenly life. The demigods, they enjoy the life in Swargalok. But when they were oppressed by the demons, by Haranya Kashipu, then it was a big problem for them. But now the Lord has come. He's removed Haranya Kashipu. So the demigods are all happy. So Prahlad Maharaj is glorifying Lord Nishingadev and he's telling him, now Haranya Kashipu is dead, you should give up your anger. You know, so, sometimes maybe you know you, yourself, you, you get angry yourself. Oh, most of us do, right? From time to time, we get angry. And sometimes people can be angry for a long time, right? Some people are angry for three days. <laughs> no joke, a serious problem. You know, we have people, this anger. So we have to hear Lord Nishingade was very angry because this Haranyi Kashipu had given so much trouble to the Lord's devotee, to Prahlad. It had greatly, it had, it had aroused the anger of Lord Nishingade. He did not like to see his devotee put 
through so much trouble. And finally, Lord Nishingadev came and he fought with him and he killed him. But he could not immediately give up the anger because he's a lion, right? Half lion, half man. Lions can be quite ferocious. They get angry easily. But the cubs of the lion, they're not afraid of the mother lion or the, 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 the parent. The cubs, they will, they will be with their mother or father, even if the lion is in an angry mood. Just like at home, your mother may be angry and you know, oh, okay, she's my mother, you know, <laughs> what to do. So, Prahlad was not disturbed, he was not afraid of the anger of Lord Nishringadev. The goddess of fortune, she was bewildered when she saw the anger of Lord Nishringadev. She'd never seen the Lord in this condition before. It was a shock to her. And she is the consort of Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev is Vishnu avatar. So his consort is Lakshmi. Right? So Lakshmi Nishringa. Just like Lakshmi Narayan, Lakshmi Nishringa. So Lord Nishringadev is, his consort is Lakshmi. And his devotee is Prahlad. And it's Prahlad's prayers which are pacifying Lord Nishringadev. It's just the presence of Prahlad. It's the mood of Prahlad. His humility, his submission and surrender. And how he's taken full shelter of Lord Nishringadev. And although everyone's afraid, they're all standing far back from Lord Nishringadev, Prahlad come, can come forward and fall at the Lord's feet and begin to offer prayers in the most wonderful way. Because he's a devotee, because he has that devotion, so he can express his feelings to the Lord. And he understands, he's describing that approaching the Lord, the qualification is simply one thing, devotion. It, you cannot purchase your ticket to Vrindavan. Just like Prabhupada said, you want to go to Vrindavan? You don't go to Vrindavan just by purchasing a ticket. The holy Dham is not different from the Lord. The Lord is absolute. And the, Dham, the Lord's Dham, like Vrindavan Dham, Mayapur Dham, these places, you, you don't enter these places just by buying a ticket. In the same way you don't know the Lord just by how much money we have or how much opulence we enjoy or how much knowledge we have or how good looking you are or how educated. None of these things will help us to go to. Only one thing is going to help us to approach the Lord and that is devotion. The Lord wants to see how much devotion we have. And devotion means we will do anything for the Lord. Whatever the Lord wants, we're ready to do. We are not the controller, we are simply the servant. And whatever is the Lord's desire, that is our desire. Just like in Shikshastikam. Every day when we say Shikshastikam, Asalishyavapadaratam panastumam adarshanam marmatam karotuva yatatatava vidadatu lampata mat prananatastu saeva nampara. 
in this in this final verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is expressing the highest mood of devotion. He is saying to Lord Krishna that even you make me broken hearted by not being present before me, you are completely free to do anything and everything with me, but you are always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. In other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, if my unhappiness makes you happy, that is my happiness. Right? Do you say like that? Do you ever tell your friend or your companion like that? If my, if, if my unhappiness makes you happy, that is my happiness. <laughs> That's a very special mood. This is the mood of pure loving devotion. So Prahlad Srimati Radharani, she talks like that to Krishna. Even though you are Lampata, Lampata means you go to other ladies. But she said, still, you break my heart, but still you are my worshipful Lord. Unconditionally. Devotional service must be unconditional. The supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service to the Lord. Such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So this is devotion, a very special quality. We're trying to cultivate devotion. Prabhupada would say, we're trying to be devotees. It is not an easy thing to become a devotee. We're trying to come to that platform. How to come to that platform? We need association with devotees. Just like Prahlad, he got association. He learned from the devotees. We have to learn also. We have to learn. We have to cultivate that devotion. That devotion is, uh, it, it requires a vair detachment. Vasudevi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana Yati Asuvaira Gyam Jnanam Chayat Ahai Tukam. Just by practice of devotional service, we will develop two things knowledge and detachment. Transcendental knowledge, not mundane knowledge, but transcendental knowledge and detachment will come about automatically the more we become devoted to Krishna, the more we are surrendering, the more we are cultivating our devotion, the more there will also follow Gyan and Vairai. They have to come where there is genuine devotion. So you can see Prahlad, how he has these things, he has these qualities. Prabhupada writes in one purport in this section, he said, some people claim, oh, it's too much. Krishna asked too much. Krishna said, give up everything and surrender to me. It's too much to ask. How he can ask so much? But Prabhupada explains, he said, it's for our good. It's not for Krishna. Krishna is not telling us to give them up for me. But it's for us, for our benefit, that we need to give up these other dharmas, 
the material of religion. Krishna wants us to benefit. He doesn't want anything from us. And we shouldn't want anything from Krishna except service. That is the thinking of a devotee. We simply want service. Ahaitaki apratita, unmotivated and uninterrupted. Devotional service should be just like they have these shops, what are they called? 7 Eleven, right? Convenience stores. They open all night, all day, all night. Do they have these kind of shops in Kuwait? Yeah, 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 everywhere they have them now, right? The whole night you can go there, you know. That. So, so devotional service is like that. The 24, seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Someone sent me a video just yesterday, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, you know, he left the body. So they sent me a video, it was recorded a few months back. Uh, he was asleep. It was the middle of the night. He was asleep, but he was offering arti. In his sleep, he was offering arti, he was moving his hands and offering the arti. They had recorded the whole thing on the video. They did not release it until after his departure. But, you know, I, I got someone sent me the copy. I can show you if you want. But it's amazing, you know, he's laying there in the sleep. It's the middle of the night, it's like after 12 o'clock, and he's laying there and he's... He was so dedicated to doing his puja. That, that's devotional sir. Sometimes we get devotees also, they chant in their sleep. You know, they're, they're laying down, sleeping, but you can hear the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. They're chanting. Um, we get, of course, people playing the madanga, you know. <laughs> when they learn to play the madanga in their sleep, you know, they're... <laughs> we got these boys, they, they, these boys went to school. They've been learning madanga, they went to school. The teacher said, they sit in the class the whole day, they're... <laughs> playing madanga beats, you know, sitting in the classroom, practicing the madanga beats. And so, <laughs> this is devotional service. It's continuous, you see, it, it doesn't stop. And it's unmotivated. We're not, we don't, nobody's paying us to do it. You're not getting paid for you know, dancing and chanting, but we do it. It's our, our life, it's our, our happiness, our greatest pleasure to do these things for the service of Krishna. So Prahlad Maharaj, he has that mood. He feels great pleasure in glorifying Lord Nisringadev. And he wants all of us also to experience this bliss. That pleasure is it, it can be there in all of us. It, we can awaken that same consciousness. We just have to follow the process. Just chant every day, do your japa. Every day, go do, worship Krishna, read the books about Krishna, and gradually, naturally, end of life, you think of Krishna and you go to be with Krishna. We can go there to be with Krishna and become one of his associates. So Krishna is inviting all of us. Mm -hmm. or Lord Nasringadev, if you like Lord Nasringadev, you can also go there and be with him. Not necessarily Ugra Nasringa, there are many Nasringas, right? There's Yoga Nishringa, there's Shanta Nishringa, there's so many different forms of Lord Nishringa Dev. Ugra Nishringa is very special. Okay, and any question? Yes. 
Hello, and thank you for such a wonderful lecture. Um, so I had a question and regarding at least at least one part of your uh, oral lecture to increase the uh, how uh, 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 the he, he was uh, surprised when uh, 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 he saw uh, you know, sneak getting killed by a Umar or instructions of Umar. And the other thing, uh, 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 so even for example, uh, if you take an example in one house, sometimes in the kitchen we have cockroaches, sometimes we have insects who bite them, sometimes we have flies. And, uh, and just like you know, as a G player, you always feel that you should, you should not you try not to not to harm any of uh, the Jiva. So what is the right uh, uh, mode of action at this point in time? Yes. Well, certainly Srila Prabhupada, you know, like one, one night he was taking rest in Juhu. You know, Juhu, it's tropical, very hot there, and mosquitoes are there. And middle of the night, there was a mosquito in, the, in his bedroom and inside his mosquito net. <laughs> so Prabhupada got up and he told his servant, he said, there's a mosquito in my net, can you get it up? Can you remove it, you know? And so Prabhupada got up and the servant then went in and got rid of the mosquito. But Prabhupada didn't like that we just kill everything. He said, don't make my place into a crematorium, you know. So Prabhupada would use a mosquito net. Generally, the mosquito net will keep the mosquitoes out. Prabhupada said, in Mayapur, mosquitoes have no mercy. <laughs> so, uh, be better to have a mosquito net. I know myself, I went on Parikrama in Vrindavan one time. I was on the Parikrama, Brajamandal Parikrama, and it, it, was, it had been a, a flood that year. There had been heavy rains. There was a lot of mosquitoes. And I got malaria because I didn't use a mosquito net. So, you know, you're, it's advisable to protect yourself from these things, you know. Mosquitoes, there's, you know, you get some incense, you can burn coils also to keep the mosquitoes away. And you can put some anti-mosquito cream onto the skin to protect you. As far as cockroaches go, I heard that Srila Prabhupada just uh, knocked one out the window and said, go outside and enjoy. He didn't kill it, but he did say, go outside and enjoy. That was, he, he was in New York. So generally, we observe the principles, we, we're not violent. The, the story is there, Magrari the hunter, He'd been made a devotee by Narada Muni and then Narada and Angira came back to see him and there were insects on the path and Mograri got down and moved the insects. He wouldn't stamp on the insects, he was very careful. I heard a story, there's a pastime about Ramanuja Acharya that uh, he'd been to Tirupati and they had some prasad from Tirupati and they'd walked for several days and at one point they took the prasad and they saw there was insects in the prasad. So Ramanujacharya immediately said, we have to immediately go back to Turupati. And they walked all the way back to Turupati. He said, now let the insects go. He said, these insects are from the holy place. He said, we, we had to bring them back. We shouldn't take them away from the holy place, put them back in the holy place. And so like that saintly persons, they have that kind of respect for all kinds of life. So we have to also develop that kind of respect, you know, as much as you can, being practical. You know, we don't want to just kill it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you, I was one, when I was in China one time, you know, in China, I don't wear this dress. I just wear normal dress. And at one point, uh, 
one point I required to get a job. I was teaching in a college and there was another man there who was also a teacher. He was an American. He was a Mormon. And he didn't know I was a Hare Krishna. But he knew I had some, some kind of faith. Well, he didn't know what it was. Anyway, I was sitting with him one day and all of a sudden a cockroach appeared. And he immediately jumped up and stamped on it. And when I saw him do it, I, you know, I got such a shock, you know. And, the, and he looked at me and he said, in your religion, don't you even kill cockroaches? <laughs> you know, he was so surprised, you know, that how I reacted. Because he thought it was so normal just to kill it, you know. But I was so shocked that he would kill the insect. So, generally we, we don't like to just kill things. Even the, the plants and the trees, you may say, well, we kill vegetable. No, we wait until they're ripe. We harvest the vegetables. We don't kill. We do practice Ahimsa. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. So, one point about humility, Maharaj. You mentioned that the humility is what attracted the Lord Asimile, and Lord Maharaj showed that. And how can I pray I'm from being a family? You also mentioned an example of. Uh, so, with all this, you spend a considerable time for us explaining the humility and how our acharyas follow. So, Maharaj, please guide us because, firstly, I find it very difficult uh, to develop that issue of how comes the devotees, it comes naturally within the congregation, but this quality, personally, I feel very difficult. So, how can we develop? As you mentioned, 24 7, uh, all the time be humble. So, how we can develop that? Well, I never mentioned that the humility should be 24 7, but uh, certainly no harm if you can do it, but it might be, might be a yeah, just like there's one man, a very nice man, a very very wealthy man from Bombay, Mumbai, a very rich man. Uh, and at home, you know, in his home, in his apartment, you know, he's very humble. The devotees come there, so on. But when he goes in the office, he's like a, a tiger, you know. <laughs> You know, it's just a different thing. When he goes to the business, he gets in the office, it's a different mood, you know, it's a different Leela, you know. <laughs> At home, you know, with the family and so on, it's one thing. But you go to the office, if you're too humble, oh my God, the business will be ruined, you know. You'll never make any money. <laughs> So you have to know time and place, right? Particular situation, what, when we should be humble and when you cannot afford to be humble, otherwise people will take advantage of you. So that's one point, you know. <laughs> and Prabhupada could be humble but Prabhupada could also be very heavy sometimes, you know. He could be very... You know, we would just sometimes just want to kill, to, to go near Prabhupada. Prabhupada's in a bad mood, you know, why? <laughs> we'll run away. <laughs> sometimes if Prabhupada saw things are not right and he's, oh, you know, there needs to be a, we'll <laughs> go and hide, you know. Not so easy, you know. People like Bhakti Siddhanta, Sarasati, you know, to be near them, they were so powerful, you know. At the same time, they're so humble, can't say they're not humble, but at the same time, they're so powerful. And they could challenge, you know, the atheists and the 
and he was Bhakti Siddhanta was Nishinga Guru. The, if the Mayavadis would run away from him, they saw him coming. Yeah, that's his humility. <laughs> So we have to know how to use humility in the service of Krishna, when to use it, offer all respects to others, if they're worthy of respect, <laughs> right? If they're Mayavadis, then are we going to offer all respects to them, you know? We have to, we have to crack them. So yes. There's a time and place for everything. Yes? So, as you are describing your discourse, um, and now that you have come to the input of Ram or Ash, it was a good version of Ram. And there are other powers that are still there. These points are uh, just taken by the Lord at the same time, or it is a different past times of this all the other incarnations of the Lord. Well, the Lord comes in every kalpa, right? So every kind, every different times He's going to come, different forms can also be there. It has its eternal form in Vaikuntha. And Vaikuntha, I don't know that it's form as Zugra Nishinga. It may be there, but we'll have to find out when we go there, right? <laughs> it's difficult to know. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know exactly the answer to your question about that. I need to read maybe Lagu Bhagavata Amrita or something. But uh, when uh, this giant visit, they got uh, mercy and when the Shri Mahavan is the Lord now, I will come to Lord Krishna. Is there a difference between these uh, three uh, lots of different uh, forms? And they are giving the message to Jain Vijayan. Are Jain Vijayan different forms? Or you mean Jain Vijayan? Yeah, when they are in well, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says that Jayan Vijay came one time in, in one, incar one, for one incarnation, the, the Jayan Vijay are coming as Ravana, but not every kalpa, not that every kalpa is, uh, although Lord Nishingadeva is in every kalpa and there can be the Leela of the uh, the demon, Haranya Kashpu, but they're not always Jai and Vijay. Jai and Vijay come one time. One time they're coming to play these parts. Other than different demons. So that, that point is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your I have one uh, small question. Uh, you were mentioning about uh, Narsimha Dev being very uh, in a very uber sarup and Brahma uh, and Vishnu Dev were afraid of approaching him. And uh, he requested uh, Prahlad, and then he said, Prahlad, being uh, a devotee, you are not afraid to uh, offer his prayers to him. Uh, 
Uh, my question is, uh, is Brahma and Lakshmi, they are also written on the uh, you know, Then why were they written? Why was uh, Brahma and Lakshmi? Well, we don't hear that Brahma was afraid. It was just they could not pacify Lord Nishringadev. They didn't know how to calm him down. That was the problem that Lord Nishringadev is so angry how to get him to be peaceful and calm down. So Lord, Lord Brahma was considering how to do it. He, he had tried, he would spoken, didn't have any effect on Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishingadev. He tried, he did say something there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And other demigods also came and they also, they couldn't, they could, nothing had any effect on him. So then they thought, Lakshmi, he's, she's the wife, she should be able to do something. But she was shocked. She'd, she'd never seen the Lord in that form before. And she couldn't do it either. So then Brahma thought, let Prahlad try. So that was the, the circumstance. But Brahma is, Lord Brahma, uh, is he an eternal associate, of an eternal devotee? No, Lord Brahma is a jiva. He's not a, he's not, the, not God, he's a jiva. And he's a, at the end of the life of Brahma, he may go back to Godhead. Not always. It's not that Lord Brahma is always a pure devotee. And we know in every universe there's a Brahma, and there are different Brahmas. We have Chaturmukh Brahma in our universe, but there's many other Brahmas with different numbers of heads, and they're not all pure devotees. But in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that this Brahma, shook hands, the Lord came and shook hands with Lord Brahma and he was very pleased with him. And so it, Prabhupada says that this means that Brahma is in Sakya Ras because the Lord came, he was so pleased with Brahma and he, they, they shook hands and so he said this is sign that Brahma is in Sakya Ras. So at the end of the life of Brahma he could go back to Godhead. But it doesn't always happen. Sometimes the Brahmas, they have to take birth again. They may enter into the body of Mahavishnu and they'll take birth again after, next time there's creation. The so demigods, the devas, like Lord Brahma is the head of the devas, they're not all pure devotees. They have material desires. That's why they have these positions. So it's the pure devotees are on a higher level than the demigods. You see, that's why Prahlad, he is a pure devotee. He can pacify Lord Nishinga. The demigods couldn't. How could Prahlad? Because he was a pure devotee. He had that devotion. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.